Are you looking to build yourself a brand new gaming PC in 2023? Well, you're in luck, because in this video we're going to go through the very best builds that you can build right now. We're going to do budget, mid-range, high-end, and show you what the best parts are, and ultimately what I'd recommend. So let's go ahead and see what deals can be had, shall we? Right after a short word from this video sponsor. MSI's Game On Get Cashback promotion is here, meaning you can get the very best PC gaming gear for less. Get up to £100 back on the very latest components from Z790 motherboards, power supplies, cases and liquid coolers. There really has never been a better time to get upgrading. But do be quick, as this offer ends on 20th of May 2023. So go and check it out with the link down below. And I'm looking to please you Americans here today, because we're going to start with Newegg, and we'll see if we can build the cheapest possible computer without compromise. And the way that I want to see if we can actually do this is by using an A620 motherboard. And you might not have heard of these yet, because they're still very new. In the UK, the stock hasn't even landed yet. It's quite frustrating, because I wanted to do a build and actually show you guys in person. But essentially, A620 doesn't have the same feature set as B650 or the higher-end X670. But what it does have is price to performance, because it still supports the latest 7000 chips, DDR5 memory, and for gaming, I honestly think these are going to be pretty much just as good, as long as you buy a good one and you're not going for like a top-end 7000 CPU that requires loads and loads of power. And we do have this one here from ASRock that I admit I've not heard fantastic things about, so for now at least, I'm going to avoid that and have a look at this one from Gigabyte, because this is the one that I'm actually most keen to get in because it has four RAM slots, which a lot of the cheaper A620 boards don't even have, which is definitely going to hurt upgradability. But fundamentally, I think it still supports the higher end CPUs as well. It should give you a wattage figure somewhere. I say should, I can't actually find it here on Newegg. I mean, you'd like to think it will support a decent amount of power. You do have an 8-pin on the top of the board, so obviously no crazy overclocking with multiple, but realistically, for the CPU we're going to use, that we're going to use 65 watt, you're not going to have an issue anyway. But obviously, if you are wanting to pair this with like a top-end, like 16-core Ryzen 9 CPU, for instance, it's probably not the right motherboard, but I'm sure you knew this anyway. If you did want to spend a little bit more money, you could always consider this Asus Tough one that they have here for 150, but this is the budget build, so we're going to add the a620M to our basket, but of course that does mean going for a smaller size micro ATX chassis. I mean technically obviously it doesn't, but I think it looks weird to have a small bar board in a big case. Of course we're going to need to add a chip, and pretty much the only option really I would consider when it comes to real budget gaming on AM5 is of course the 7600. You can get the 7600X, that in the UK is often the same sort of price, but you should go for the 7600 because it does use less power and is a fair bit cheaper at $218. I do also want to take this opportunity to say that we will be using the stock cooler that comes in the box with the 7600. There's not really any point like buying your own at the time of doing the initial build because it's definitely not the quietest CPU cooler in the world, but it's free. You get it inside the box that's included with your purchase. And to be honest, the Ryzen one's not even that bad. So while you can upgrade this at a later date, if you've got a limited budget, I wouldn't recommend spending any of it on CPU cooler unless you absolutely have to because it's a really easy upgrade you can make next month when you get your next paycheck. If you want to check whether your CPU comes with one, just scroll down to the bottom where it says cooling device. And as you can see here, it says Wraith Stealth Cooler. And just for comparison, here's the 7600X. If you scroll down to the bottom of Newegg on specifications, you can see it says cooling device not included, processor only. You can clearly see the difference. We'll also be needing some DDR5 memory. Obviously, it doesn't have to be the absolute fastest kit, and for going RGB, it's definitely a good idea to save yourself some dough. Sort by lowest price. You pretty much got two choices for around about $40. You can get the kit from Team Group that doesn't have a heat spreader on at all, doesn't look as nice. Or if you spend a little bit more money, and it's probably what I'd feel more comfortable with recommending really, you can get this kit here of 5200 megahertz, Kingston Fury, 16 gigabytes. That's all we're going to need for gaming. Let's move on now to our SSD, and 500 gigabytes is all we're going to need. Hopefully Gen 4 speeds, but let's have a look. 980 Pro for $79, bit expensive. But here we are, look, P3 Plus 35, and MSI have got one as well for $29.99. Is this really how cheap Gen 4 SSDs have got? That's that's actually stupid now. Uh, what are the differences in speed though? 5,400. And the MSI is a lot slower at 36, 2300. So the crucial P3 Plus is the SSD of our rig. But let's now move on to what is always going to be the most personal bit of any build, the chassis. And I do want one that looks good, but you are trying to save money while still having upgradability and decent thermals. I mean, I don't know what the difference between a computer case and a gaming case is. They're literally the same thing. Let's go to computer cases. Micro ATX. I mean, obviously the O11 Air Mini would be amazing, but that is way too expensive. 
Oh, the AP201 is great as well. Really, really like that. But you know what? Actually, there's a deal at the moment on this, the Fractal Design Meshify C Mini. And I haven't built on this one specifically, but I have on the larger size case. And the thing that will stand out about this is that the quality of the chassis is going to be so much better than all the others that aren't on offer. But while you're not going to get any RGB with this, you definitely are going to get, as I say, that build quality and a case that you will want to have for a long time and upgrade while still maintaining all of the airflow that you get from the front. So as long as you don't mind the lack of RGB and probably spending an extra $10, $15 more than you could on something that's a fair bit cheaper, I think this is a bit of a steal. And then let's move across to the most interesting part of any gaming PC, the graphics card. And you've pretty much got two main options at the moment. If you want the best value possible, you're going to have to look on the used market. So I can't tell you specifically what to buy because obviously the deals will literally vary from case to case, but it's something maybe like a uh, old GTX 1070 isn't a bad option if you want to go like as cheap as you possibly can but you have to be careful with VRAM and all of these things so realistically the card that I'm actually recommending at the moment new is the 6600 and I've literally just done a build all about this you can find it in the top right corner of your screen and this will give you a perfect idea of the sort of performance you can expect especially bearing in mind that that rig actually didn't have a CPU that was as good as this so go check that out if you want a alternative and real world built rig because obviously these are always ideal is, but without actually specifically building them myself, I can never guarantee like a 100% compatibility and any quirks and things that I couldn't foresee without building it myself. But let's go over to our GPU section, have a look at the 6600 and have a look at our deals. So here's the one I actually built with last week, $199. That does look to be the best option at the moment, but there might be something else. Doesn't really look like it. So there you go. You got a really good apples to apples comparison of the performance of this card in that video. Again, I'll leave that link down below. But we'll add this to our basket and then we'll grab ourselves a power supply. 550 watts is the minimum for this, but it is always worth seeing if you can spec it up ever so slightly because if you do want to upgrade your graphics card, you don't want to have to also upgrade your power supply. EVGA 550, that would be fine for $63. 600 watt W1, $65, that's probably a good option. So you're pretty much looking at around about $65, $75 if you want one that's higher spec. But I think for this build, we should be absolutely fine with the EVGA W1. So let's go with this 600 watts add this to our basket. And then other than a copy of Windows, that is our rig just about done. And in terms of our total, we're currently looking at $772.44 with shipping if you got it all from Newegg and obviously any US taxes. You guys know more about that than me. I think that actually this is a pretty awesome rig for the money, especially on the case. I think if you're watching this, you might have to get a slightly different case. I'm not sure how long this deal is going to be on there for. But regardless, the components you can get for this sort of money is really cool. And my favorite thing about this is actually the upgradability because while a620 isn't the best platform out there it still allows you to have ddr5 memory and you can expand this and go for faster speeds in the future but more importantly you've not only got better cpus now but you've got better cpus in the future in theory this motherboard might be valid for like three four years worth of cpus we don't really know at the time of filming for the money you're kidding a lot. You could definitely go for Intel and potentially save yourselves a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be such a drastic difference, especially bearing in mind that the 7600 is a ridiculously good CPU that is going to serve you for many years to come. So I'm pretty impressed with this one, but let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Next, rig. And we're going back to good old Blighty for this one with some Overclockers UK. Right, mid-range. Should we go for an i5 or should we go for Ryzen? I think I've got to do this as I would personally do it, and that is still to go for Ryzen. I think we're looking quite AMD today. So let's go for the Ryzen 7700. There's not actually that much difference between the X and the non-X, but we won't need such a big cooler if we go for the 7700, so let's go with this. Now, before we move on to anything else, I want to talk to you about graphics cards because at the moment we have the 3060 Ti and the 6700 XT that are probably going to be replaced and they may well be replaced by the time you're watching this, which means that actually choosing a graphics card is going to get a bit more tricky because at the moment I think spending £400 on a 3060 Ti is not the best use of money. I would advise waiting a little bit to see what happens because there clearly are some deals to be had. If you look at these 6750 XTs, these are currently sitting at around about £400 which is easily the cheapest I've seen these personally and the performance of these are brilliant but 
you don't want to be that guy that sort of buys a graphics card and then finds you can get something for like the same sort of price a few weeks later, as obviously you'd be quite annoyed. So we're not going to go for these cards. We're going to look at something a bit cheaper with maybe a 3060. I mean, there's still a lot of money, aren't there? You've got this one here from Gainwood, £299. Whereas if we go for a 6600 XT, are these going to be any cheaper? £260, look. 260 These cards are coming down in price. I love to see it. Let's have a quick look at a comparison of frame rate though. Big shout out to Games Choice for actually making this video. And you can see the 6650 XT actually performs a lot better in Warzone, performs better in God of War, and it also performs better in Dying Light 2. And there have been driver updates as well that should have improved both of these cards, but my understanding is that AMD has pretty much come out a little bit better on top, shall we say, when it comes to performance from driver updates over time. So 260 pounds, the 6650 XT, no brainer. Let's also have a look at motherboards. We're obviously going to go for AMD. Prices are definitely coming down a fair bit, but look at this. There's a deal on this Asus Tough, 190 pounds. Full size board, comes with Wi-Fi, pretty much everything you need. The only thing to note is that if you go for B650E, you do get Gen 5 support on the graphics, which would be great for future proofing, but it's probably not worth spending the money right now unless you, I guess, have a fair bit extra and you really want that future proofing. Let's pick ourselves out a CPU cooler though, as I do want Want this to be a nice cool quiet system that still has plenty of performance and lets the CPU fully utilize itself essentially. Obviously you can spend loads of money on all-in-ones and things but with a 7700 it's just not really necessary. Look for a, maybe a 40, 50 pound cooler should do a decent job. I mean the good old Hyper 212 is 45 pounds. But you know what? I'm a man of taste and the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 is something we've used time and time again on the channel and yes it doesn't have any RGB but fundamentally it's a really good cooler. It's relatively inexpensive. It doesn't make a lot of noise and for a 65 watt chip it's going to be more than sufficient. And then once again look at memory and I'll be honest with you I could say to you I'll oh, go for 32 gigabytes it's very future proof it will save you money potentially in the long run but honestly I just don't feel that way I think most games 16 gigabytes is still more than sufficient and if you can get hold of a kit that is two times eight you can still upgrade that later to 32 without any fuss so honestly if you can get hold of one I would so once again our good old friend the Kingston Fury Beast RGB list is the way I would go this is running at 5600 megahertz so it's going to allow our Ryzen CPU to run slightly faster pretty much anything up to 6000 is great but I wouldn't overspend for memory speed when obviously the CPU you could actually upgrade that as well and potentially get even better results but 6499 for 6 16 gigabytes of memory, I don't think you can beat that. We will of course also need an SSD, but this time we will definitely go for a terabyte. Here's the Corsair Force MP600 Core XT at $56.99, the Crucial P3 Plus for $64, and then the SN770 for $65. Once again, let's have a look at the difference of speeds. The Corsair, 5000 read, 3500 write. The Crucial's 5000, 3600. And then the SN770 is pretty much 5000, 5000. So we're going to go with the SN770. Of course, we'll also be needing to grab ourselves a power supply. Here, I'm definitely going to say 650 or 750 watts. Be Quiet System Power 9, 50 pounds, but that is non-modular. I really want to look at one that's semi, to be honest. There's not actually that many options on overclockers. They all seem to get quite expensive very quickly. So maybe then we should look at something that isn't modular and save ourselves some money. Here's the Seasonic B12. This is a 750 watts, 80 plus bronze. I haven't used this one, but Seasonic is a brand I guess I trust quite a lot. 70 pounds, loads of power, loads of upgradability. As long as you're okay with stashing the cable somewhere in your case, not a bad option. Okay, but case-wise, what do we want? Oh, let's go for this 350D windowed side panel, £120. Bargain? No, let's actually look at a proper case, shall we? <laughs> Nothing's really grabbing me just yet. Lancol 2 Mesh C RGB. Now we're talking. Oh, no, we've done it. We've got it. The P400 Air. We love this case. We've built on it a couple of times on the channel. Fantex cases are fantastic. That's what I'm personally using. This is the next one up. P600S, they're really good, easy to recommend. So once again, including delivery, we're looking at £1,114.79, which is obviously a fair bit more than our budget rig, but in terms of performance, you are obviously going to get more out of this. It's actually gonna be not as dramatic as you might think because the 6600 and the 6650 XT, there's a big difference, but it's not like night and day. It's not double the frame rate, and obviously the price is a fair bit more, but this is a lot more upgradable. You don't really have any corners cut here at all. You can swap out the graphics card for one of these new ones that's coming out like a 4060 or a 
7700 and ultimately it would fit right in so again let me know your thoughts on this down below i think the only complaint would be some people would prefer to have an all-in-one but that's extra money it is extra rgb but i think in terms of value for money this is looking pretty nice but let's move on to the big build i mean maybe we do an itx and make it small Let's not do that. And for this one, we're going to use Scan. And first of all, I actually want to choose a chassis. And let's go for something a little bit on the larger side this time. Not too big. Well, not that big today. I mean, there you go. Look, H7 Flow. Really, really easy decision, that. It's a nice looking case. You can get it in all black or you can get it sort of black with a white tint as well, which is nice. So let's add this to our basket and then let's move on to the CPU. And I'm going to go for the most powerful one for gaming at the moment, which is the 7800X3D. But I do want to say this is not necessarily the perfect choice. Obviously, there are some issues we've heard about with certain motherboards causing some problems. I've not had an issue with mine that I'm personally using my rig downstairs, but the main one really to be aware of is the fact that if you go for Intel, then you're getting loads more cores and it's a lot more flexible when it comes to other tasks and if you want to do like streaming and things at the same time. But I'm assuming you want the best gaming PC possible and eight cores is still plenty. Just be aware that you shouldn't discount Intel because while well, the power consumption on AMD is better and the gaming performance can be slightly better, the i9 is probably a more well-rounded chip. But regardless, we're gonna go AMD desktop, 7000 series, and here it is, our 7800X3D, the only processor I've personally bought in quite a long time. And then we need to choose a motherboard. Honestly, I'm still gonna go with B650 because as long as you're buying a high-end one, performance is basically gonna be the same. It's gonna save you 100 quid. There is absolutely nothing wrong with going for the highest spec X boards but I would only do so if you actually need the extra features. I mean, out of interest, how much more expensive is X670E? I mean, on some motherboards, clearly it's a lot more, but then on others, it's not that much more. So maybe I'm gonna change my mind. This is the high-end build after all. Okay then, slight change of plan. We're gonna go with the Steel Legend 670E, and we're gonna change the case from the black to the black with white, and then we incorporate this somehow. Of course, this time we will be using 32 gigabytes of DDR5, and we'll try and get something that's running at 6,000 megahertz. And it appears Corsair has the solution, 120 pounds, AMD Expo. Let's add this one to our basket. SSD, so we look at Gen 5 drives. MP700, PCI Gen 5, 170 pounds. I mean, that's not crazy. It depends what you're after, really. I think I personally would still go for like two terabytes of storage and have loads of games. But if you're new to PC gaming or you don't play loads of games at the same time, that's not a bad solution. But I will say that until I've personally tested the benefits of Gen 5, whether it's actually something that you'll be able to properly utilize, things like cooling as well. I know you can just put this in the motherboard and the default heatsink, but ASRock actually will sell you on some of the higher end boards like a heatsink that has a fan in it, so do we need that? What difference does it make if your SSD starts to get really hot? Will it just throttle? Will we have problems? I don't really know. So I don't wanna recommend you spend loads of money on a Gen 5 drive just yet. Instead, we're gonna look at a Gen 4 drive that's really fast with two terabytes of storage. FireQ to 520, not bad, but not the absolute fastest. Clearly, this is gonna be the way to go. The two terabyte MP600 Pro, 7100, 6800 for 130 pounds. Even comes with a heatsink as well, so you don't have to worry about using the default. I think we now need to look at our CPU cooler, and this time, yes, we will look at something that's a little bit more high-end. So we have this one here from Thermaltake that's on offer for 100 pounds. And we've also got one from Antec, Deep Cool. Have we used this before? I think I have in 240, and I was actually quite impressed with it. The thing with these is that you can spend more money, you can get extra like RGB screens, buy ones that have extra fan hubs, better fans and things. But fundamentally, the main thing is that it's quiet and that the cooling is pretty good. And the chip is gonna require a decent amount of cooling, but nothing crazy. So you're not gonna be maxing it out anyway. So actually, I think I'm gonna go with this one from Deep Cool. And as I say, I've used the smaller one before. In fact, this is the one that I have in my own rig downstairs yeah on a 240 and it's great boom we saved the absolute best to last the graphics card can wait one more turn let's just go to our power supply now 850 watts i think there are quite a few options actually you've got an rm850 in white that would be absolutely fine for our build yeah that would look nice actually let's go with that and then now comes the bit where i genuinely don't know what we're going to choose because we need to pick a graphics card and it's tricky at the high end because a 4070 is still high end you're looking at 600 pounds for that that is not cheap that is something i 
I would say is a heck of a lot of money. Yet you can go all the way up to a 4090 that costs about 1,600, 1,700 pounds, which is insane. I think that if it was me buying one today, I would probably be looking at something like the 7900 XTX or the 4070 Ti. And I know a lot of people don't like the 4070 Ti. I get it. But fundamentally for me, that level of performance is what I'd be after. So it's all well saying I wish there was something else, but ultimately there isn't. That's the right amount of performance I need. Spending more wouldn't make sense. But obviously it depends what you want to play. You can be playing at 4K, or you can be playing ray tracing, or are you just doing multiplayer titles? Let's have a look and see what we can actually get. Cheapest at the moment is 800 pounds, which is a lot. So maybe those are selling well, whereas the 7900 XT is currently sitting at about 750. So you're not gonna get DLSS 3, but this does have a lot more VRAM, and I think a lot of people will probably be happy with this for games like Warzone. But then likewise, you can also go all the way up to the XTX, with the lowest being a thousand pounds. So let's just do one quick test to see which is best. Oh look, it's me doing a graphics card roundup. Let's look at our performance numbers. Here we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and you'll see that the 4070 Ti gets about 159 frames a second on average, whereas for frankly not that much more money, you can step it up to 201. If you play Warzone, that's a better card. Spider-Man Remastered, there's not actually such a huge drastic difference here. This is running FSR 2.1, still faster, but not really by much. And this is exactly why I include the average FPS from a few different titles, and you can see that it's faster by around about six frames a second. So it depends what you're after, really. I do think there is a lot more performance in both of these cards to come out with different driver updates. But fundamentally, if you want to go for ray tracing single player games, I would strongly recommend going for NVIDIA. But I think for everyone else, especially people that want to be a bit more future proof with VRAM and are looking forward to driver updates, the 7900 XT actually makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to use that today. The only other thing we need to do is to buy some fans to make this come alive. You can get these Cooler Master Sickle Flows that will use addressable RGB. £40, probably not a bad shout. We'll add that to basket. And then that brings us to the total. What do you think it's going to be? I mean, I know, I can read it. It's £2,183.87, apparently with free shipping. And all in all, I have to say, this is a pretty banging PC. It's got all of the features that you need. You've got plenty of upgradability. It's a big case, fully populated with RGB. It's gonna look fantastic, but obviously you can add to it later if you want. You've not really got any compromises. But for me, I think the thing that's really exciting is the performance of this is pretty much at that limit of diminishing returns. Like you don't need to spend this amount of money in the first place, but the more you spend from this point onwards, it's almost like the less you're getting in return. Like it's not gonna be the absolute most powerful. You need a 4090 for that, but it's not actually going to be that far away, especially in things like Warzone, where it's actually going to have a serious amount of performance. So the question really does go out to you guys on this. What do you make of these rigs? Would you build these yourself? What changes would you make? What do you like? What do you dislike? Please let me know, but absolutely smash that like button if you've enjoyed this. Get yourself subscribed. And if you do want to check out current pricing on all of this, you can find it linked down below. And of course, you can find full build guides of this over on the channel. And while you're down there, why not check out MSI's Game On, get cashback promotion. You can grab up to £100 cash back on the latest gaming gear, so why don't you start your PC upgrade today? Maybe a new Z790 motherboard? The PCI Gen 5 compatible A1000G power supply? Check out their full selection today and get upgrading with the link down below. But thank you so much for watching this video, we'll catch you in the next one.